scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. So here we see Jesus teaching us the various roles that the ministry of prayer and the ministry of the word play as far as defending you and securing the manifestation of the life of God that is in you. To the one who has downplayed the relevance of the ministry of prayer, you are making a wrong step. And eventually, the tempter has a way of navigating through your weakness until he brings you down. To one who has de-emphasized the supremacy of the word of God, I'll be wrapping up by showing you the assignment of prayer and the assignment of the word of god in the life of a believer most people do not know what prayer was meant for and what the ministry of the word of god what does it achieve seeing that it is a pattern for growth and stature when i submit myself to the ministry of prayer what happens to me what are the dimensions of the relevance of prayer in my life why should i submit to prayer and then submit to the word I'm hoping that by this teaching, God will bring a, a serious deliverance for a person, a ministry to say, listen, we need to be able to capture the whole counsel of God. Not to ignore the ministry of prayer, not to ignore the ministry of the word. Hallelujah. This is very powerful. Shala sobrandi gebali akatos. So the second temptation, he took him and Jesus said, it is written again. The third temptation, the Bible says, he took him into an exceeding high mountain and that he showed him the glories, the kingdoms of the world. This is another discussion for another day. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you know by now, you are an intelligent church that is full of the word. You know that it's not just an elevated altitude there. No, where he took him to this location, it's a spiritual location. Where do you stand upon that you see the glories of the world? It's not a mountain. He took him into and showed him. He said, all have been given to me. Jesus did not say it's a lie because Adam gave him. He said, bow down to me. When the Bible tells you what shall it profit a man when he gains the whole world, that mountain is the place of that business. You don't sell products there. It's a transaction between your soul and the world. And many people have been taken to that mountain till today. There is a threshold level of success you cannot attain until you pledge your allegiance clearly to one of these governments. It's like a spiritual meter. The devil is watching you when you strike that chord. Here they come. There has to be a system of negotiating your soul. Yes, sir. When you read Revelations 19, I wish we had time. That harlot that rides upon the horse having the blood of the Matthias. Are we together now? When you read the many things that she sells, you will see there that she sells the souls of men. That's where she got the souls of men. Those who came to exchange their souls. That's why the apostle said, I desire, I wish above all things that ye prosper, but that while you prosper, ensure that your soul also prospers so i can vet the basis of your prosperity by checking the condition of your soul while you rise if you are losing your touch with god as your wealth is increasing your fraternity is with babylon hmm. 
We don't clap for people for being prosperous in the kingdom until we ascertain the state of their soul. If we find out that the higher your glory increases, whether financially speaking, your life is going down, you need to go for a retreat and vet who is sponsoring those possibilities. Because Satan will never allow you to rise as your soul prospers. No. It is the reason why the principles of prosperity for a believer is very different from an unbeliever and does not make sense. Because until we explain the side effect of, being, of prospering the world's way, there is no obvious side effect except we check from the realm of the spirit. Are we together? Yeah. So what is the assignment of prayer? Let me wrap up. What is the assignment of prayer? I want to make a statement that I hope will not be misunderstood. Prayer is not the only key in the kingdom. There are keys of the kingdom. There is one key to the kingdom, Jesus. And then when you come into the kingdom, there are many keys of the kingdom. Prayer is a foundational, fundamental key. But it is an error to believe that prayer is the only key in the kingdom. Prayer must be involved in every process of the kingdom. But it is not the only key. Are we clear on that? It is true. If you come into a house, you come through the main door, which is Jesus. There are rooms in that house. Is that true? If you have the key to the restroom alone, you'll be in trouble when you are hungry. Because you have the key to, you are in the house. We are not doubting it. But now you are hungry and the only key you have is to the restroom. Or if you have the key to the kitchen alone, if you need to use the restroom, the key to the kitchen, as potent as it is, may not help you. So he gave us the keys. The keys. Are we learning now? Yes. One of the fundamental major keys of the kingdom is the ministry of prayer. I needed to say that um, I'm a man of prayer. So you, you know that. I'm not, I'm not downplaying it at all. But it is important to bring us. It is such revelations that have made us downplay other keys. It is important, no matter how small and how large a key, a key is a key. You can stand in front of a small door because a little key was missing. Are we, to, are we together? A key that you can put in your pocket, for instance, you can have a robust prayer life, you can have a robust word study life, and not understand the power of relationships. That alone can cripple and literally abort everything as though you were not a Christian. The Bible is a holistic capture of all the ways of God. Are we together now? Line upon line, precept upon precept. Did you ever wonder what Jesus was teaching them? That even after he resurrected, he said, get back, let's continue the lecture for 40 days. What else was he teaching them? If it was the ministry of the word, he had taught them. If it was prayer, he had taught them. So what else was he teaching them? Until the church embraces the entire counsel of God, we will not attain unto a state of maturity. So you see various versions of lopsidedness in the body of Christ, which are a testament to the fact that we have ignored certain dimensions, maybe sincerely. This is why God put conferences like this, to be able to bring to speed and bring us to a point of balance. So that, you see, when you read Revelations, he said, come and I will show you the Lamb's wife. He said, he showed me a city that was equal in length, equal in depth, equal in height. No imbalance. That is the Lamb's wife. Are we together? So, when it comes to the ministry of prayer, you are robust on fire. When it comes to the ministry of the word and all the other dimensions of the kingdom. This is why he gave unto some apostles and prophets. Is that true? Evangelists, teachers and all of that for the maturing of the saints. That the saints now being matured will do the work of the ministry. Let's finish up. What is the assignment of prayer? I will not be teaching, but I will just list it. Just for us to know. In addition to all we have heard from the great and amazing men and the women of God that God has brought, including that which we heard from God's servant this morning. What is the assignment of prayer in the life of a believer? I have studied my Bible and I'm, I'm still a student learning. 
but I have found four principal assignments that the ministry of prayer accomplishes in the life of the believer. Number one, the first assignment of prayer that the Bible reveals is for transformation. Luke chapter 9 and verse 29. The Bible speaking about Jesus again, our pattern man. He said, and as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment was white and glistering. The principal assignment of prayer is not even for petitions. It is a tool that was given to help you evolve to superior spiritual dimensions. Show me a believer that just came into Christ and let that person submit himself through methodical mentorship to the ministry of prayer. I show you a fading version of that man and like the eagle, a new version, a weak you can become a strong you when you pray. A timid you can become a powerful you when you pray. Are we together now? An undiscerning carnal you can become such an individual with high level spirituality when you pray. In Luke chapter 18 and verse 1, Jesus spake a parable, the Bible says, to the end that men, not some men, men, provided you are a man, he says that you ought to pray and not to faint. 1 Thessalonians 5 17 it says to pray without ceasing it means to be consistent in your prayer life are we together so the first assignment of prayer is for growth and transformation number two the second assignment of prayer as revealed from scripture is for obtaining requests and for making petitions the second assignment of prayer to the believer in Christ as revealed from scripture is for obtaining requests and making petitions. Mark eleven twenty four. 24. It says, and what things soever ye desire. Mark, did I get that right? Yes. When ye pray, not if ye pray. It says, believe that ye receive them and thou and ye shall have them. Jesus was speaking and said, He that told you have not asked me anything. He says, Ask that you may receive. Because the law is in Matthew chapter 7 from verse 7. It says, Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock, it says, and the door shall be opened unto you. I like verse 8. It says, For everyone. There are some things that are for some in the Bible. But when it has to do with the ability to receive through prayer, everyone that asketh receiveth he said ye have not because ye ask not someone say prayer. prayer are we learning so number one for your transformation number two for obtaining requests number three the third assignment of prayer as revealed from scripture is for warfare and intercession warfare and intercession there is a warfare dimension to the believer's life Paul in giving us his exegesis in the book of Ephesians the entire six chapters are broken into three theologically speaking that teaches the believer to understand number one his positional advantage in Christ number two the work of the believer in terms of character but number three the ability to stand against the wiles of the enemy Are we learning now this is very very important warfare jesus did not leave us in the dark as to the fact that the whole world lies in wickedness paul was teaching us and he said we wrestle not against flesh and blood he says but against principalities powers is that true rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness that reside in the heavenlies Jesus himself is called the head of all principalities and powers. He didn't deny their existence. In teaching his parable, he said, while men slept, the enemy came. So you are not the only farmer. You sow and another farmer can come and sow something you did not sow. Ezekiel chapter 22, when you read, I think verse 30 now, he said, and I sought for a man. I hope I got that scripture right. I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it, but I found none. Prayer becomes an instrument, a potent instrument for intercession. You see, the, a, a, a genuine apostolic and prophetic intercessory ministry is founded upon two things number one your love for god and people 
number two the principle of shared dominion if you do not love god and people you cannot truly engage the dimension of warfare and intercession and then the principle of shared dominion the bible says the heaven of heavens is the lord but the earth has he given unto the sons of men that means nothing happens on earth without the participation of a man let them have dominion he said hallelujah i hope that i was still out five minutes from my time this night and will trust God to pray and speak over Nigeria in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Hoping and wishing and praying and saying things will change is a joke. And don't let anybody laugh at prayer going on because it matters. Like I said, it is not the only key, but it is a potent key. If we don't pray, we are going to be in trouble. In fact, the cure for temptation, the Bible says, watch and pray. That means your mind and your spirit watch there means don't throw your mind away you will need discernment there is an intellectual component to your safety but in addition he said pray so that's number three have we been blessed today the fourth assignment of prayer as revealed from scripture is for spiritual legislation the ability to create possibilities in your life i'd like you to please pay attention if it is true that god is creator the first revelation of god from scripture was not a healer was as creator genesis 1 verse 1 the bible says now the earth was dark and void is the hebrew word tohu wabohu confusion and chaos and then verse 3 it says an elohim the talking spirit said light are we together now and there was and what he saw was good so we were created in the image and the likeness of god and we must also function as talking spirits the ability to legislate to create our possibilities the bible says in proverbs i believe is it or job 22 28 said declare ye that thou might test be justified where the word of a king is, thou shalt also decree a thing, yes, and it shall be established unto you. Can I tell you, never downplay the place of confession. But the challenge, and I say this respectfully to the body of Christ, is that confession without the hovering of the spirit is empty words. This is the technology the Bible reveals. God never spoke until he ascertained that the movement of the spirit had set the atmosphere. It was the spirit that took Ezekiel. When you read Ezekiel 37 in the valley of the dry bones, please pay attention. The spirit of God took him there. I prophesied as I was commanded. The atmosphere had been created and there was a sound. Most times we just make empty confessions. That's why it does not work. You must ascertain the hovering of the spirit. It's the union of the hovering of the spirit and the spoken word that commands creation. I would learn that practically in a Renhard Bunker crusade many years ago. I was in that crusade. You may have heard my story. Thousands of people and I was standing watching that great man of God. I was also a man of God but I had to throw all of that. Because you don't receive from colleagues. You must submit yourself. That spiritual potential difference must be there. And he preached a very simple message almost annoyingly simple and while he was done he was taking a glass of water so that he would now minister the baptism and healing and the lord opened my eyes that was my first visionary encounter of the person of the holy spirit i saw a gigantic bird without exaggeration it would be as big probably as this auditorium just hovering around with some silvery things tied to the wings it was just soaring i thought everyone was what is this By the time I returned from that vision, sir, I had backed the stage. I was, I was already facing, you know, facing the people while I didn't even know. And that was where the Holy Spirit took me to Genesis 1-2 and said the union of the hovering of the Spirit and the spoken word is what births creation, not just confession. You now understand why the psalmist will say, bring me, or the prophet will say, bring me a mistrail. 
you even see this pattern i wish we had time you would have seen what happened after saul the son of kish met with prophet samuel are we bible students one of the one of the signs that he was given was that as you return number one restoration had happened what was missing had now been found number two honor and favor you will meet three men holding two loaf of bread they will salute you and give to you and he says receive then number three you will come to the garrison of the philistines and you will see some prophets and they will be holding instruments of music what were they doing with it walking on the street it is a law it's a spiritual law there is no man i know that works in superior dimensions of the miraculous that does not have an inclination to the atmosphere of worship let's wrap up what then is the assignment of prayer the assignment of the word like prayer i have found from scripture four principal assignments of the word in the life of the believer do not forget what we're discussing this 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 morning the patterns that make for growth and for stature and we identified two principal patterns according to Acts 6 4 the ministry of prayer the ministry of the word and my assignment was to help to bridge that gap that age-long divide that has been in the body of Christ whether you are given the liberty to choose prayer or the word we are never given any liberty of such according to scripture so we use Jesus because if we use a prophet or any other person Jesus is our pattern man at least God credited him and said I am well pleased so if you study Jesus he is perfect theology number one the first assignment of the word of God is to build the character of Christ in the believer. My apologies, I have to rush. The first assignment of the word of God is to build the character of Christ in the believer. This is what you call transformation. Transformation is the name given to the process that makes you become like Christ in experience. It says, my little children of whom I travail until Christ be formed in you. That formation of Christ is what we call character. Character is not just about resolutions. It is something that comes from within you. You will make resolutions and break them until something dies within you. And the assignment of the word of God is to grant you that capacity to evolve. Hallelujah. Number two. The second assignment of the word of God is for the renewal of your mind. The renewal of your mind. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5, it says to permit this mind to be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Jesus did not just excel because he was the son of God. There was a mental construct. He had allowed the word of God to build a kind of thinking, an approach to life. That gave the Holy Spirit room to do mighty things through him. And he says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. In Romans chapter 12, when you read from verse 1 and 2, he says, I beseech thee, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye offer your bodies unto God, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. He calls it your reasonable act of worship. Verse 2 says, and do not be conformed to this world. The word world here is the Greek word aeon. It means the thinking pattern that comes with the age. It says, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Are we together? Number three, what is the third assignment of the word? The word of God is the principal channel for accessing wisdom and understanding. The wisdom that comes from above. In 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse, uh, should that be 15 or so? It says, all scripture, no 15, let's try 15. Did I get that right? Yes, and that from a child, thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise. You are made wise. Yes, there is the spirit of wisdom and all of that, but there is the stability. Let me tell you the truth. Honestly, the word of God contains the wisest perspective on all matters. If you submit yourself, 
when you find people demonstrate certain levels of godlike wisdom beyond that which is affordable as far as our civilization is concerned it was outsourced from above through the world the word can make men wise. It can culture your approach to life. It can bring dexterity and order to your life. Are we together? Wisdom. And understanding. And finally, the fourth assignment of the word as revealed from scripture is that it empowers us to walk in authority. It empowers us to walk in authority. It empowers us to walk in authority everyone especially in the New Testament and afterwards who walked in authority they were men and women of the word when the Holy Ghost came on the day of Pentecost they thought that they were drunk with new wine and Peter said no he still them and said this is that and he began his exegesis right from prophet Joel to the psalmist and he said this same jesus whom you have crucified today he has been exalted as both lord and christ the bible says when they heard it they were caught to the heart and they said men and brethren what do we do and he said repent for the remission of your sins and you shall also receive this promise he says for this promise is unto you and to your children your children's children even to as many as are far off those that the lord will call it is impossible to walk in authority outside of the world my charge therefore is that we we obtain grace from this teaching and all of the teachings before now and after now and submit ourselves to learn respectfully speaking especially if the call of god is on your life whether you have begun ministry or not you never outgrow learning the word of god your authority is a measure of the word of god that is resident within you it is written you may have heard me say is greater than i saw it is written is greater than i heard no matter what you see and hear it is written is above it you can use it is written to rewrite any narrative so if i wake up and have a negative dream i saw but i can use it is written to veto the outcome your life is at a risk if all you have is i saw your life is at a risk and you see prayer helps you to see prayer helps you to hear but I hope you bring that prayer under the dominion of the word. Because I tell you, it is written is greater than I saw. It is written is greater than I heard. I saw, I heard can carry several margins of error based on your level of transformation. When you grow later, you find out what you saw is not correct. But this that is written remains, even in the realm of the spirit. Colossians 1 verse 16, let me wrap up exalts the word of god and shows the level the extent of the dominion of the word of god he says for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in the earth visible and invisible the scope of the impact of the word of god is beyond the visible realm he says whether they be thrones dominions principalities or powers all things were created by him and for him my charge is that we obtain grace from God and bridge the age-long gap. Never watch people praying and say these guys are just prayer, prayer people. They are just fanatics. Be careful because there may be something you are missing. There are many things you will never understand about the realm of the spirit until you submit yourself to extended periods of prayer. Take note of my choice of words. Extended periods of prayer. I submit to you by the integrity of God's word. There are certain realms you may never understand the dynamics of their operation. There are certain levels of the presence, the Shekinah, the manifested presence of God that may never find expression in your life until you submit yourself to prayer with fasting. If I had the time, I would have told you what the fire of prayer does. Because the Bible says when the apostle caught the fell wood, remember in the book of Acts, there was a viper hiding there. The viper hid because the wood was so cold. The moment it was lit with fire, the viper that was hiding came out. It is impossible for anything to hide when you are on fire. In fact, Jesus was speaking about the 
deliverance he said when a spirit leaves a man it goes to a desert region and without anybody casting it from the desert it will run back to the man because a desert is a hot place it was it was just a prophetic message he meets you cold even though swept and empty it will gather others and bring there no matter how mad a man is he does not enter fire by mistake and listen jesus speaking about prayer said my house not just the temple he's talking of you shall be called number one hold on hold on he leaves you with two options you are either called a house of prayer or a den of robbers because the thief is there ready to steal so you are either a house of prayer or your coldness makes you a den of robbers he will steal your joy steal your health steal any other thing you are either a house of prayer or a den of robbers i choose to be a house of prayer but then i trust god for grace and we thank god for the remarkable apostolic works that great men like pastor Pojo are doing across with wafbeck to be able to bridge the gross ignorance that is in the body of christ i apologize please let me one minute let me press on this this is very important i submit to you that there is a lot of random uncoordinated knowledge within the body of christ knowledge must be sequentially arranged you see knowledge is like a building the bible calls us spiritual houses do you build a foundation and put a zinc on it just because it is required in the building there is timing and there is sequence it is line upon line so most believers freelance their knowledge they add anything upon anything and it does not equal to the glory of god it is time for us to reset literally some of us may need to go back to the drawing board and begin to examine the pillars the bible says in hebrews chapter 6 six foundational doctrines that make up the believers foundation six of them are we together now from there it says let's move on to perfection there are other aspects but first things first it's a waste learning about prosperity where you are not saved you've not learned about character you are learning about money you want to die it will kill you you must understand death to the flesh then that will profit you are we together now you are praying for increase and you have not built capacity in the spirit the challenges that come with that increase you will not be able to endure so i'm hoping and trusting and i pray that god will help all of us including myself men and women of god across nigeria africa in this prophetic wave of revival that we must return to the place of doctrine we must obtain grace to leave this celebrity christianity and get serious with building god's people according to jeremiah 3 15 that we become pastors according to god's heart who will feed god's people with knowledge and with understanding let me rest my case. Please rise up on your feet. Just one prayer point father i obtain grace to submit myself to prayer and the ministry of the word please lift your voice and pray let it be from the depth of your heart where i have de-emphasized or overemphasized. i obtain grace to balance my coordinates to make sure that i am robust and sound in the ministry of prayer with fasting intimacy with the spirit and then the ministry of the word i submit myself to learn doctrine i submit myself to be methodically mentored i obtain grace from you that i would be like the lamb's wife equal in length equal in breadth with no exaggerations Hello, scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, 
attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.